Hey guys, in today's Replacer Radio, we have a G35, we have a metric kit and a Pioneer Radio. We're going to show you how to put them in, so stay tuned. So today we're going to go ahead and take this out. Now a couple things to note about this factory radio. It has a Bose system and it also has the factory navigation system. Most of these don't have this anyways, but if yours does, you're probably going through the same reason why they're replacing it. They can't get an updated CD. The last time they made a CD for this car was 2013. It's already a four year old disc and it's expensive. So join us today in the process of putting a new radio and hopefully soon to be your G35. So to replace the radio, you actually have to start over there in the passenger kick panel. You have to remove the running boards, the kick panel, the glove box, this side panel here, and then you just have to drop this. So there's a lot of work you have to do before you even get to the radio. You also have to remove the gear shifter. Go ahead and pop the little silver thing down here and you'll notice that there is what we like to call an oh Jesus clip. It's just one of these cool U's that holds this in place. You can use a panel tool to remove the floorboard as well as the kick panel over there. In the back is a little 10 millimeter plastic bolt thingy that you can just twist off. Now in the glove box, you're gonna see a yellow harness. That's gonna be an airbag harness. Do not unplug it. The panel will just pop off. You can also just pop off the glove box light. All right, so go ahead and put the gear shifter back into drive and then pull up on the armrest. This just kind of pulls back and up a little bit. And then what you want to do is unplug the harnesses and remove it. Now, in case I forget, when you go to reinstall it, see this little guy right here and this little guy right here? They're little nipples that stick down. The camera might not be doing them justice. Either way, on the gear shifter, there's one in the front, one in the back. Those are what you use to line up this center console. So if you're having a hard time, make sure that these are going into the appropriate holes. All right, now we have to get these side panels off on both sides. I still have to drop my little undercarriage here. Now to get this panel out, you don't have to remove this, you just have to pull it back. We're gonna go ahead and remove the whole panel though, because we're gonna be running the Bluetooth mic and it's just easier. There's one screw in the back that holds this panel in place and one screw at the top. And on that side, there's one, what is it, just the one screw in the bottom and then one in the top. So there's two screws in the bottom of the radio. Go ahead and remove those. Up until this point, it's been pretty straightforward and easy. Now is where the hard part starts. This guy right here. There's one screw for this radio behind here, so we have to get this out. This is the part that is fragile. Um, I mean, the whole car is pretty fragile, but this part in particular, very fragile. Just take your time, be real careful, use your vinyl panel tool, just kind of work your way around. In typical Nissan fashion, it has metal clips holding a plastic product. Now you just want to remove the two screws that hold the clock in place. Go ahead and move your wires out of the way and you will see the one screw that's up there. Go ahead and remove that. As you imagine, getting that piece out can be a real pain in the butt. Now imagine trying to get that piece out several times to remove that one screw. It's not totally necessary to put back in on install and we'll show you how when we're done. There's a plastic piece on the new kit that will actually, there's a brace up there that sits like this, screw, 
screw goes into the top. Normally you put the plastic over it, you screw it in. The plastic will actually go underneath it, which will keep it from moving. So when you're going to reinstall it, slide the plastic underneath the metal bracket, and then don't bother putting the screw back in. Put the clock, put the panel back on. You'll never have to remove it again. It won't be loose, won't cause you any issues. I've done tons of them that way, never had a problem. All right, so we have this all ready to go. We're gonna slowly pull this out and start unplugging all the harnesses. When you're taking it out, put your hand on that top metal bracket, just like I am, and be real careful of the dash as you're pulling it out. It is really, really close. I mean, like, like close. Go really slow, and then just keep your hand on this while somebody else unplugs the radio. All right. We got this bad boy out, let's take it to the bench. So this is the 03 to 04 Infinity G35 kit from Metra, part number 997604. Now, there's a couple different versions of it. There's a T, which stands for taupe, there's a silver, and there's a B, which also stands for black. Let's go ahead and get this out. Now, this kit will do single and double din. Comes with instructions, comes with the kit itself, wrapped in foam. Now the major complaint about this kit over the years has been these buttons here. They don't feel like the factory buttons and this doesn't have the silver trim around them. Down in the bottom here you have the pocket and inside the pocket are your single din brackets. That plastic piece I was talking about earlier that's going to slide into the top. The double din brackets, the air conditioning control cable, and a bag with two screws. Now we don't need this so we're going to go ahead and throw it away. Now let's take a look at the factory radio and and check out all the parts we have to get off of this thing in order to reinstall them onto the new kit. The first one is gonna be this guy here. This is just this little black or silver trim bezel. Now most of the time this will already be broken. It's got little clips here that just push in and out. Now most of you guys are just gonna have a pocket behind here, in which case you just remove these metal brackets and get the pocket out. Because this one has the navigation, it's a little bit more work, but the end result will be the same. What we're trying to do is just get this metal brace out. There we go. Now all of them are gonna have some form of ribbon cable to connect the main unit to this control center. Go ahead and just unplug that. All right, once you've gotten this out, go ahead and set it aside. Now we have to remove these AC vents. There's little clips down here on the sides that are gonna allow it to unsnap. There's typically four of them. Start with the passenger side. Now the driver's side has this little piece right here attached to it. It kind of gets in the way of the clips. The easiest thing to do is just drill these and remove them. Once you've removed it, you'll see that the four clips that were on the other side are also on this side. All right, that's it for parts that we need off of this. Now you can set this aside. So looking at this kit, there's a couple things you notice. These guys right here. These are there to hold this together in shipping. What you have to do is just kind of twist them and they'll fall right off. Now if there's any little nipple on there, just go ahead and take your straight edge and just kind of rub them out of place. Now we want to flip it over and we want to reinstall the pocket or in this case, the navigation controls. Now it's okay to use your drill to get the screws started, but make sure you finish them off with a regular screwdriver. Go ahead and remove the trim bezel. So because we're gonna do a double den, we wanna remove this piece here. You can do that with some cutters and then a little bit of sanding. Now when you're sanding it down, there's a little piece that sticks up, this guy right here. Make sure you leave this. The reason why that is there is because it's what locks into this. If you sand this all off, you're gonna have a real hard time lining that kit up. All right, so now we wanna go ahead and take our brackets. We're gonna line them up with that L that we left. See, they even have a little L shape there at the top. And then we wanna go ahead and test fit our trim bezel. Now at this point, 
I like to put a little CA glue on these four corners here and snap it into place. Also, if there's any bulging here, I put a little CA glue on here and here once it gets in to lock this thing in place. Make sure you're not getting any of the hardener on the kit itself. So always hold it, let gravity do its thing. Make sure you have no glue on your fingers or anything like that. It'll totally destroy the kit. So there's a little bulge right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of glue to these to hold them down. All right, give this a couple minutes to dry up. Make sure it's nice and solid. Next, we wanna go ahead and put in the AC vents. Now in case you forget which one goes on which side, these guys here are always at the top. Now go ahead and plug in your AC controller wire. And if you actually had the pocket, you want to do this before you, plug, before you put the pocket in. Now we can go ahead and get the radio mounted. All right, so now it comes to this piece here. This piece here is going to mount just like this. That's what this bag of two screws is for. All right, now because this is basically falling apart, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add two little pieces of double stick tape to this so that it stays in place. Now, a lot of the times it'll stay in place just because the dash hangs over it, but we like to, you know, be sure. All right, so at this point, if you had the pocket, you're pretty much done. We don't, we have the nav system, so we still have to keep going. So cut two grooves in the side of the navigation hole located next to the big circle. Then go ahead and slide it back on. And then right here, you can go ahead and attach it to the radio. And that'll hold it in place. All right, so if you're gonna do one of these and you don't feel like going through all this nonsense that we just had to go through to get this into the kit, because the kit wasn't made for this. We had to modify it to work. Pick yourself up a pocket. I'm sure they're not that expensive. And it would save you the time of going through all this. With that being said, let's take this into the car and test fit it. Make sure it all still fits with all this extra stuff on it. All right, so the kit still fits in the dash, perfect. Let's go ahead and get it out. We'll set it aside while we work on the harness. All right, so as we said in the beginning, if you have bows, there's three different ways you can hook it up. Now, if you don't have bows, there's really only one. That's this, using this BHA 7550 harness. It's just a regular harness, which will go over the wire colors in a minute. Now, if you want to use this harness with bows, what happens is the volume will get really loud really quick. So at like volume 10, you'll be maxed out. That's it, you won't be able to go past that. So you won't have a lot of volume control. So to counteract, that you could go with this one here which is a 7551 which will allow you to use the RCA section now two things that aren't the greatest about this one is that most of the time you're gonna need some kind of a noise filter like these the SNI ones you'll need two of these one for front one for rear sometimes not all the time now with this it will work and it will play volume normal per se and you'll be able to turn it more than likely all the way up however in some cases when you turn the volume all the way up it's not as loud as it was with the factory system when you had it all the way up. So what we like to do is a hybrid. We like to use this. This is the LP54 from PAC. This is designed to interface with factory amplifiers. Now what you're gonna do with this is you're gonna hook up your harness to this and then these RCAs to that. So let me show you how to do that because this is how we're gonna do ours. So when you open the LP54, it has one harness. It has RCAs on one end, speaker wires on the other. What you wanna do is come in here and cut the RCAs off. Now don't cut them off really close. You want to cut them off somewhere like here, about halfway. Now once you've gone ahead and cut off the harness, go ahead and take your RCAs and plug them in. Now what we're going to do is connect our speaker wire outputs to this. We're going to lengthen these wires so they marriage up with these wires here and we'll be all set and ready to go. Now, 
Just to recap on what all these wires do, so that you have an idea. You have four sets of speaker wires. They're in pairs. You have a solid and you have a stripe. It starts with white, which is the driver's front, gray, which is the passenger front, green is the driver's rear, and purple is the passenger rear. Next, you're gonna have yellow, which is constant 12 volts, red is accessory, black is ground, orange yellow is going to be illumination. For the Pioneer, it has a yellow black, which is a mute wire. It also has a purple white, which is a reverse trigger, and it has a light green which is the emergency brake wire now on your factory harness you'll have all these wires plus you may have a solid blue which is going to be your power antenna or amplified antenna you want to connect that to your red wire you may also have a black with a white stripe black with a white stripe is a secondary ground for the preamp section you just want to connect that with your black now there's several different methods that you can use to connect these two together you can use butt connectors you can use crimp caps you can use solder with shrink wrap which is a preferred method All right, so also on this install, we're gonna add one of these. This is the PAC Audio SWI RC Steering Wheel Control Interface. This is a universal interface that you can connect to most cars. Inside the box is some instructions. A couple of them. The wiring harness and the unit itself. Now for this car, you want to get to the main wiring instructions that look like this and turn to page two. At the top of page two, it asks you which radio you're putting in and gives you a corresponding number. We're putting in a Pioneer, which is number seven. On the unit itself, there's a turn dial. Go ahead and turn it to number seven. Go ahead and set these instructions aside. You're gonna need them for programming in the end. Next, you wanna to go to the Vehicle Installation Information Guide. This is the one that has the car manufacturers down the side. And you wanna to turn to the page that says Infinity, which is page six. Next, we want to go to the G35 corresponding to the year of the car. So that's gonna be the 2003 to 2007. Go ahead and put a star next to it so you know where it is. It's gonna tell us that we're gonna use the white wiring harness. We're not gonna cut any of the loops, the brown or purple. The wiring harness we wanna look for, which is gonna be in the wiring harness installation guide, which is right here is gonna be the G35. We wanna program the unit to version three. Go ahead and write the number three on the back of the unit. What you wanna look for is step 274. That's gonna be in this guy here that has all the numbers on the side of it. Go ahead and turn to step 274. Mark it so you don't lose it. Now what this is gonna tell us what to do is connect a 150 ohm resistor to pin 23. Let's go over here and find the G35, which is located right here on page two. So it's telling us that pin 23, say 23, which is a green wire, is gonna get a 150 ohm resistor. Pin 22, which is a red wire, is gonna go to the white wire. And then pin 25, which is yellow, is gonna go to ground. All right, so we'll set this right here. We don't need these anymore, we'll put that right there. If you go to this little piece of paper inside of it, this guy right here, what you wanna do is come down here to where it says 150 ohms. That's gonna be the white red wire. On the harness that it comes with, it already has a wire with a 150 ohm resistor connected in it. It's gonna be the red white. So what we need in order for this to function is the red, black. There's two blacks once you get to the end. You need both of them. You need the white wire and the white red wire. Now there's also a white black on here. You're not gonna need that. You can go ahead and just remove it. I also like to go ahead and remove all the other wires I'm not gonna be using. So in this case, we're not using green, we're not using orange, orange, we're not using yellow, and we're not using blue. The brown and purple loops stay intact. Now just go ahead and pull this straight like this. I like to go ahead at this point and tape this up. For the tape we use is called Tessa tape. 
This is the felt interior tape version. Now what we want to do is separate out a red and a black so that you have a the whites, the two whites and a black going off on their own. We'll go ahead and tape those up a little bit. Now what we want to do is go ahead and solder our red and black into the connections we have here which are the red and black on here. All right, now you can go ahead and finish taping up the main harness. Now go ahead and plug in your steering wheel controls. Now on the harness is gonna be this blue yellow wire. If you're using a Kenwood or a JVC, this is the wire you're going to connect to. If you're using everything else, more than likely it's just going to be the headphone jack that hangs off of it. I like to cut it short, put a buck connector on it so it's insulated, and then zip tie it into the harness. I do not tape this wire in with the harness because if for some reason the steering wheel control module goes bad, all I have to do is cut a bunch of zip ties instead of unraveling a bunch of tape. Now another thing to keep in mind, the reason why this is so long is that I like to route the steering wheel control interface to somewhere that is easily accessible instead of burying it up behind the radio. So in this case, I can tuck it down by the gear shifter so all I need to do is pop it up if it needs to be reprogrammed or anything like that. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is lengthen these wires because they need to reach over to this because the other harness is gonna be down here as well. So now we can go ahead and take this into the car, install these wires, and finish the job. All right, so once you get into the car, you're gonna grab the harnesses that were all attached to the radio. You have your two big ones here that are gonna to attach to these guys, and then you have these two other ones here. One of these is going to be the harness we're looking for. And how you can differentiate it is across the top here, you have three, and you have three, and you have a solid roll on the bottom. This one here has two and three. That's not the one we want. So what we wanna do is grab the one that's three, three, and then a solid roll across the bottom. And then on it, we're gonna use the instructions like we said, pin 23 is green, pin 22 is red, pin 25 is yellow. The numbers are located here. You can go on, flip it over, count, and you'll find the three wires that you're looking for. The red, the green, and the yellow. Now what we need to do is just attach our wiring to these wires, and we'll be all set. As a Christian. So now we want to go ahead and pro program the steering wheel controls. To do that, grab your steering wheel control module. There's a button on the side. Make sure the car is off. Press and hold it. Turn the car on. The red light's going to come on solid. Press the button and release it three times so that the LED blinks three times. Then wait. The LED will flash three times to let you know it's programming for three. Go ahead and turn the car off. Turn it back on it should flash three times. If it doesn't flash three times, do it again. Now we can go on to programming the steering wheel controls. That's this portion right here. Go to your particular radio, in this case it's Pioneer. On the steering wheel we have volume up, volume down, track up, track down, mode, and power. So we're gonna program volume up, volume down, presets up and down, source, and voice activation for Siri. So to do that, just press the button once, it'll blink, and press the corresponding steering wheel controls. So we'll hit the button, volume up, volume up, volume down. We're skipping, skipping, skipping. We're gonna go source, then we'll go track up, track down, skip, 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 skip. Phone activation. Now the unit will sit for a minute with the red light on and it'll blink a few times to let you know it's programmed. Now you can go ahead and test it. So we want to plug in, make sure CarPlay works. All right, we want to test the microphone. What's the weather like today? Today, the temperature will range from 78 degrees to 91 degrees. So now we also want to test the air conditioning to make sure it does what it needs to do. Make sure all the lights come on. Temperature moves. All right, so that all works. So now we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the car and get it out of here. 
All right, guys, that's it. So if you want to add a cool new touchscreen to your G35, that's how you do it. Nice. Exciting, isn't yeah. it? I know, right? What a pain in the butt. <laughs> okay, a couple things to note. Go slow, take your time. That's it. This car is one of those cars you just don't want to rush yeah. through. All right, Fernando, if you please. All right, if you like this video, please subscribe, thumbs up, share. Um, you know where you find us, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and also in Twitter. And if you'd like to ask us questions, we have a live show that we do every Monday night on Facebook. It's Car Radio Talk with Dean and Fernando. That's us. All right, guys, you have a great night, and we'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye.